Now, there are other places where there can be conformational changes as well that affect, uh, that will eventually affect the macromolecular structure of the DNA or the RNA, okay? So, in addition to the rotation of the nitrogenous base around the glycosidic bond, there can also be uh, changes in the conformation uh, in the uh, ribofurinose ring. So, remember, for instance, that when we think about for instance, when we think about glucose, right, we draw this in a chair conformation because we know that this isn't actually a planar molecule like, uh, for instance, the Haworth projection would suggest, um, but that it's going to bend uh, because all of these carbons that are within here uh, and are going to be sp3 carbons. So there's going to be out of plane, right? So it's not written in a plane uh, such as what a Haworth projection like it is in this is shown. So in the same way for a furinose ring, right, this is going to be slightly out of plane, okay? Or if we think about uh, the ribofurinose ring sort of looking like this, the base structure, one of these carbons is going to be out of the plane uh, with the uh, other four atoms within the, re uh, within the ring. And so one way you can think about this is in this is video here. So what that means is that there are different conformational changes uh, as well. So there are different places where maybe the C, the, the uh, 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, or 5 prime carbons are all out of this plane. So this can fluctuate uh, in practice. And so this is not necessarily static. And this can change, uh, but then this can also be, uh, this can change, for instance, in the nucleic acid or with the free uh, ribofurinose ring. Uh, but once it's locked into place um, by, uh, for instance, if it's incorporated into some macromolecular structure. Um, let me stop this. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this can be, uh, different positions can be outside of the plane. So this shows several of these uh, different conformations. So this is, for instance, again, if four of these carbons are in plane, uh, you can see we call the plane by this dashed line shown in the slide. And then one of the carbons is out of plane uh, up. So in this case, it's the, um, it's the two prime carbon that's um, sticking out of the plane. This is the one prime carbon here. And then we can think also about where that carbon is pointing out of plane is it up or down relative to this to the five prime carbon? So if it's up relative to the five prime carbon, such as shown here in this uh, pink structure, it's called in the endo form. Uh, if it's in the opposite direction uh, of the five prime carbon, then this is called the exo uh, the exo form. So uh, the blue one is C one prime exo. Uh, this is going to be a C4 primed endo in yellow. The green is C4 primed exo, and then the light blue is a C3 uh, primed endo. Okay, and then we can also see these uh, different puckering uh, within uh, this figure down here. And so, depending on uh, one of the two of the more common uh, puckering forms uh, for these nucleic acids. Of the C2 prime exo and the C3 primed endo. Uh, excuse me, the C2 primed endo and the C3 primed endo. And that can have a huge uh, influence if all the nucleic acids which in, within a DNA nucleic acid are all in the C2 primed endo or C3 primed endo uh, position, then that can have uh, a huge effect on the macromolecular structure uh, for the DNA. And we'll discuss that in a later video.